Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the new, revised, enlarged Gustav Leonhardt edition. Yes, here it is on Warner now, which nominally claims to re remember Das Altewerk on Teldeck, but this is different. Leonhardt has had many editions, many, 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 many editions, and he recorded for all of the major labels, and really quite amazingly, um, one way or another. He made lots of recordings for Teldeck. He made lots of recordings for Sion, which was a division of Sony at one point in its life. He made recordings for Philips, which is now Decca, and they were gathered together in this box. You'll notice he doesn't smile very much. In fact, I've never seen him smile. He always looks kind of, this is about as friendly looking as he ever got, I think. And then, of course, there was the previous Teldeck Leonhardt edition, which is right here in this box. Let me do this so it doesn't fall out. And here he is. There you go. This is one of his most famous photographs, looking like sort of an extra from a zombie film. There he is. But the truth is, he was a rather gaunt and austere character. There's no question about it. In fact, um, he didn't he didn't look quite that depressed, um, you know, in his youth. In his youth, he had quite a bit more fire and energy, although he was always somewhat forbidding in appearance. Here's a picture of him just out of high school. There you go. So as you can see, um, he was, well, you know, he's, it wasn't a beauty contest. Let's put it that way. Now, Leonhardt is famous, in my opinion, as a tremendously influential teacher. He was a pioneer of early music performance. He was a bit eccentric. He definitely was eccentric. He thought that it, music was all downhill um, since Beethoven, you know, and that the piano was evil and things like that. You know, he had some, some quirks. He was a lot like sort of a Dutch version of J.R.R. Tolkien. You know, Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and everyone thinks he's very jolly, you know, he thought that English literature and language was all downhill after Shakespeare. I mean, including Shakespeare. He thought Shakespeare was terrible. And Leonhardt thought Beethoven was terrible. All of that emoting. He was an austere kind of guy. Let's not kid ourselves. It's that, that maybe that Dutch Protestant mentality or something like that. He was a little bit, a little bit that way. And his performances are that way. They're a little gaunt, a little austere. And I think toward the end of his life, in the remakes, because he remade things all over the place, he did three or four Goldberg variations, and, you know, they didn't get better, like so often the case. The freshness had sort of worn off. But his earlier stuff, much of which was on Teldeck, um, contains much that is the best of him, and some of his less interesting stuff, which was on Virgin, is now included in this box. It's gone up, you see. This was, this previous edition here, this previous edition was 21 CDs, and this one is 35. So there's 14 more discs in it. And the difference is all the stuff he did for Virgin Classics, some of which was wonderful, well, don't get me wrong, but some of which I thought was a little bit perfunctory. That may be the word. Some of the Bach playing particularly could be a little perfunctory. And he was a wonderful Bach player. But really, he did so much to establish period instruments as a legitimate medium for interpretation. But even more than that, and I think where his real value lies, is that he just discovered the living vitality and beauty of so much early music by composers we never heard of. And whether you like his performances or don't like his performances is almost beside the point. He was the guy who let us, made us want to listen to this music, to hear it. Even if you don't like his performance, you wanted to hear a better one, but you wanted to hear that guy, that name, who had been just a name in a music history book. I mean, no one ever thought that we would be performing this stuff, but play it he did, and extraordinarily well most of the time. I mean, he was an amazing keyboardist. He played all of them. He played the organ, the harpsichord, the thing, the, you know, the, every contraption that was invented in those days. And he gathered round him a, a who's who 
of period instrument performance. Franz Bruggen, the Koiken, the Koiken brothers, and the Koopmans, and even all of these people who did all of the stuff later independently or their own stuff for their own label. So many of them studied with Leonhardt. And apparently he was a, a very, very fine teacher, very sympathetic to those who agreed with him, and apparently rather sour and unsympathetic to those who did not. But hey, there's nothing new in that, is there? I mean, some people have actually accused me of being that way sometimes. I can't believe it, but yes, there are rumors. Let's see what's in the box. I actually like this packaging much better than this, this large bulky thing in individual jewel cases. I have to admit, especially since you get 14 more CDs worth of stuff. And uh, there are a couple, there's some duplication of repertoire in here, but by and large, it's not too bad. Um, aside from the Teldec thing, his best recordings were all on Sion. You know, I've talked about some of them like that amazing Bach D minor harpsichord concerto and, and, and other pieces like that. They were just fabulous, fabulous recordings and some CPE Bach and other stuff. And there's some of that in here. Not, of course, the Sion recordings, but let's just take it out. Let me see how this works. I, I got the thing open. Then there's this little rather perfunctory booklet. There's not much in here, just the usual hagiographic note and whatnot, laudatory comments. And let me see if I get the CDs out. Oh, it's so difficult. Okay, here we go. Here they are. Now, oh, there we go. Oh, my goodness. It's an effort. It's just an effort, but they're, they're, they're tucked in there rather tightly. Okay, Bach, concerto, concertos for harpsichords. Numbers two, three, and four, the triple concerto for flute, violin, and harpsichord. It's lead number two, number three, number four. Yeah, because in this series, number one was not played by him. The D minor, it was not. I think it was played by Herbert Toxe. Is that who it was? Or one of those people. <laughs> but yeah, he didn't do the first one because he'd done it for Sion. And he did it again later, I think. But anyway, so you get these harpsichord concertos. And it's with, I mean, look at who's playing. Franz Bruggen and, and Marie Leonhardt. And that's the bride of Frankenstein. And uh, the Leonhardt consort. So it's pretty cool. Then we have, let's see, more concertos for harpsichord, number five, six, and seven, the oboe concerto, concerto for two harpsichords, number one. Well, you get all the Bach harpsichord concertos. And who amongst us did not have this set on Teldec? I mean, I think we all had it. It's really amazing. And, you know, when you look at the, you know, some of these people, Alan Curtis, there he is, is one of the harpsichordists in one of the multiple harpsichord concertos. I mean, it's really kind of cool. You find these names coming up when they were just little kids and they were playing with Lee and Hart. Then we have, once again, the concertos for two harpsichords. These were on Virgin. And it, this is with Bob Van Asperen. So you get, you get them again, you know. And it's like, okay, you don't need them again. It doesn't matter. Then we have the Goldberg Variations. Um, and this is one of his earlier ones. I th this is the one I think it has like no repeats. It's rather quick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 42 minutes long and rather zippy, all things considered. It's kind of like the harpsichord equivalent of Glenn Gould's. He would probably kill anyone who said such a thing, but that's the approach, more or less. Um, and if you want a short Goldberg, then that's a good place to start. Then we have another Bach thing, the Chromatic Fantasia and Fugue, Sonatas, Suite, and Toccata. That's on this thing. And we get the all the Bach sonatas for violin and harpsichord with um, Lars Frieden violin. And those are lovely. Those are beautifully done. And oh, Bach's Quod Labette and the Capriccio and keyboard works and you know all these miscellaneous keyboard things and other stuff. And you've got some songy little bitlets. And we've got like, oh, Agnes Giebel is the soprano. And, and you know, Anna Bilsma. And Anner Bilsma, the Baroque cellist, they all started with Leonhardt. They really did. He was he was a a one man revolution, a one man school of thought. And in this respect, he was far more important than Nicholas Harnoncourt was. Harnoncourt was very very much a romantic conductor in period instrument drag. You know, he was a very 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 you know sort of. Um, mannered and interventionist kind of romantic guy, but he played early music. Leonhardt was not. 
Leanna Hart was austerity incarnate. That's what made their complete Bach cantatas on Teldex so interesting. The contrast between the two approaches couldn't have been more different. Then we've got the English suites. These are also the, the, virgin, the virgin classics things. And the partitas. And, and also on Virgin Classics. And in these performances, again, he was very abstemious, I think, with respect to repeats. And some of his playing st struck me, and still does, as a tad mechanical. It really does. And I know, you know, Bach was his hero, you know, basically. But yeah, I, I, he needed to be more, more you know, he, he was not one of the guys who was going to get into the, the fun of Bach. And Bach can be a lot of fun. Bach was a fun guy. He really was. And the fun shows itself in things that you can do with the music, ornamentation and whatnot. He's a very straight ahead kind of guy. And then we have some cantatas. You get some cantatas, a bunch of cantatas. So here's some cantatas. Have some. Here they are. And it's three discs. And then we have, let's see, Purcell, Sacred Music at the English Royal Court. Now, this is marvelous because, you know, Purcell was a very, very limited, specialized taste before the, the early music people got a hold of him. And you got, let's see, um, a bunch of, of anthems, you know, Rejoice in the Lord All Way. I love the All Way. They, the S only came in like the, the 18th century, I guess, right? And then it came All Ways. So Rejoice in the Lord All Way. Blow up the trumpet in Sion. Because, you know, Cyan had a, a testing range where you could blow things up. And, O oh God, thou art my God. And the Shakani in G minor. And, O oh God, thou hast cast us out. That's a sad one. And my heart is indicting. That's famous. And remember not, Lord, our offenses. As if the Lord was going to forget them. But this is one of those discs where you have to deal with James Bowman, the countertenor. Ooh awful. But that's okay. You get the idea. And David Wilcox is the chorus director. It's, it's a nice thing, by and large. It's music that no one had paid any attention to or heard before. And we have the personal consort music for strings and harpsichord, which is, which is marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. This is terrific to have. Stuff that was never getting played before Leonhardt got his fist on it. And some personal odes. This is with the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment. So now again, we're on Virgin. And we get three odes for Queen Mary's birthday. How does the glorious day appear? Your guess is as good as mine. And, and love's goddess sure. And come ye sons of art. Famous text that lots of people have done. And James Bowman is here too. But there's, there's David Wilson Johnson and Howard Crook and, and uh, Julia Gooding and, you know, Oh, some good singers, too, so you don't have to worry. Uh, let's see, Cooper, oh, keyboard music. This is where Leonhardt really made his statement, in my view. In my, the intimacy of the keyboard was, was perfect for his style, his somewhat withdrawn style of playing sometimes, and this kind of music, these instruments, they're, they're very sort of cool expressivity or lack of expressive expressivity, if you want to say. I don't believe that's the case, personally. I really don't. But, but it was ideally suited to his ability to decorate a melodic line and, and, and capture the integrity of the music to make it sound like serious, important stuff. And we needed that. We needed that then, and this is a wonderful disc of keyboard music by Couperin and, and Polietti. I mean, who knows Polietti? I mean, you know. And Nicolas de Grigny and Rameau and Anonymous. This is, I remember hearing these discs. I remember them when they came out, and I remember them, you know, in the, in the 70s. And, you know, this was such a marvelous voyage of discovery. And you just can't give him enough credit for that. You can't. And then we have Froberger, harpsichord and organ works. Who in the day was playing Froberger? Certainly not I. I was playing Debussy's Children's Corner. Froberger was the farthest thing from my mind. And then we have, oh, this is fun. This is, this is also on, on uh, this is on, was this on Warner? No, this was on Teldeck. 
This is the, the Kunal Biblical Sonatas. These are fun. These are, these are big sonatas for organ um, or harpsichord or like other things. Let me see what else. And there's narration. Yes. Narration. Is he narration? Yes, by Harnacourt himself. Um, these are sonatas based on biblical texts, and they're awfully interesting. They really are. Kunal was Bach's predecessor, who no one paid any attention to, and who wrote some very interesting music. And so that's really cool. Then we have harpsichord and organ music by, you ready? Johann Adam Rankin and Heinrich Scheidemann, Scheidemann, pardon me, Scheidemann, and then there's Bach, then there's Georg Bohm, who was one of the great organists before Bach. And his organ music's really very, very good, by the way. I mean, you know, there was more than Bach in those days, believe it or not. And Handel and Johann Christian Bach. Handel may have been a little bit too sexy for Lee at heart, you know. He was a, he was a, a, a genuine Epicurean hedonist, you know, especially for that era. But, uh, but Leonard Hart does a very nice job in the keyboard music. And then we've got Frescobaldi. I mean, Frescobaldi, nobody was playing. And Torini, Francesco Torini. And Giulio Caccini, well, we've heard of him. And Biagio Marini, I, I've heard of him. I, mean, I don't know if anyone else has. And some Scarlatti keyboard sonatas. Not the most sparkling Scarlatti, perhaps. But again, a wonderful collection of Italian keyboard music and very interesting keyboard music. Then we've got this fa fabulous Monteverdi disc with the Combattimento di Tancredi e Clorindo, which I'm gonna do a talk about, because I adore that piece. I adore Monteverdi. I mean, I have to do much more Monteverdi's. Don't get me started, we have to. And some Monteverdi madrigals, and 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 Bach's Italian cantata, you know, that one, Non sacca sia dolore. Yeah, very cool. And then, oh, look at this. Jean-Joseph Casadea de Mondonville, another household world, six sonatas for violin and harpsichord, revelation of repertoire that no one ever heard of or bothered with. Then we have the Rameau, the pièce de clavecin en concert. Now, I know, I and mean, this is with Franz Bruggen and Sigiswald Koiken and Wieland Koiken and Leonhardt. There may be performances that have you know, a more slightly like colorful or, or you know, let's just say romantic approach, a more subjective approach to the music than these, but there is still, you know, landmarks, landmarks, absolute landmarks. Then we have Consort and Keyboard Music by Dowland and William Laws, a bunch of my William Laws. William Laws is a great composer. His, his, his consort music is fantastic. I, I cannot recommend it strongly enough if you like music of that period. There's another guy I should talk about. John Caprario, Cooper Caprario, William Byrd, yes, Thomas Simpson, and Thomas Lupo. So that's a marvelous collection of, of British chamber and keyboard works. And then we have another English consort and keyboard music thing with William Byrd, Thomas Morley, John Bull, John Dowland, Thomas Tompkins, Orlando Gibbons, Giles Farnaby, William Tinsdale. I mean, I mean, we still don't know who some of these people are or know them at all well, but Leonhardt was digging it all up. And then we have concert music by, from Germany. We have Bieber and Bieber is just a great composer. He's wonderful. And Muffat and Rosenmuller and Samuel Scheidt and, and, and Schmelzer. Schmelzer was also a wonderful composer. There's some really good music in here. And this, this disc acts, you know, as a wonderful sampler to music of the period. You know, other groups after Lee and Hart went and investigated these individual names and the repertoire a lot more intensively than he did it in his time. But, but these were the things that told us where to go and where to find that music. Then we have Handel Recorder Sonatas. So that's Handel, we all know that. And then these, this is a, a, was a really fine Virgin disc, I must say, Virgin, Virgin Classics. It was C.P.E. Bach Cello Concertos with Honor Bilsma and the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment. His, ce his cello, all of C.P.E. Bach's cello concerti were also arranged for keyboard or the other way around, depending on which we think came first. And they are fabulous, fabulous works. I mean, they are really, in, in a very real sense, 
uh, along with some of Boccherini's, the first great cello concertos. And, and they are just amazing. And he wrote three of them, and you really should hear that. I mean, you should hear the concertos, and that's a wonderful performance if you like period instruments. It's excellent. And then we have some, some Bach's, double concertos by Bach's sons. We've got CPE, and this, this has got the double concerto for harpsichord at forte piano, which is hilarious. It's funny. It really foreshadows Haydn. And it's a, a, an amazingly humorous and timbrely delicious piece. I mean, there is no work that requires a harpsichord and a piano um, until like Frank Martin's, you know, Petite Symphony Concertant from the 1940s. That's how cool this piece was. It was commissioned um, by, by Mendelssohn's great aunt, Sarah Levy, who was one of those, you know, wonderful um, wealthy Jewish patronesses of the arts who was, you know, supporting literally a Bach cult in Berlin. And she was friendly with C.P.E. Bach. He also wrote his, his three final quartets for her. And she was a marvelous keyboard artist. She performed Bach in public, um, which was also an unusual thing for anybody to do, never mind a Jewish lady. And then we have uh, Johann Christian Bach, his Symphony Concertante for oboe and cello, and Wilhelm Friedman Bach, his concerto for two harpsichords. This is a great, great disc. Just a wonderful, wonderful disc. And the coolest thing about it is that the three composers are all very different from one another. So uh, it, it goes to show that Bach was not only a brilliant teacher of his own kids and others, and an amazing composer, but he was the best kind of teacher. He did not stomp on the originality of the, the composers, even if they were his own kids, who came after him. He let them flourish, and that is quite a recommendation as a parent. Either that or he was too busy to care what they were doing, which is also a possibility. And then we end up with a bunch of symphonies by C.P.E. Bach. Votken 183, and for strings, these are all the ones for strings, and number five, so which is one, which is 182, and you know these are also very fine performances with the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment. Although Leonhardt was always more interesting, I believe, as a as a performer than as a conductor. But you know, that's me. So that's the whole set. It's, it's 30, 34, what is it, right? 34? I'm just looking here. Yeah, 35. 35 CDs. And like I said, you know, even where Leonhardt isn't at his best or his most, you know, emotionally warm and fuzzy, the music itself is not entirely warm and fuzzy, so that works. But beyond that, th these discs make superb samplers these collection discs of keyboard music and other things. You know, other, other people, like I said, we're going to explore this repertoire in more detail, but you cannot give the man enough credit for first introducing us to its beauty and its, its quirkiness and its originality and just its viability. Its viability is modern music that's worth listening to. Leonhardt gave us that. And for all of those reasons, he deserves I, I think I think the greatest respect, and I, I just think he's marvelous. He's absolutely marvelous. So, if you don't have your Leonhardt box, get this. It's cheap and it's fantastic, and you're really going to be set. It's a wonderful way to begin your exploration of music of the of the early Baroque period and mid Baroque period. It really is. You're not going to do better. And it's all wonderfully recorded and incredibly intelligent, and I enjoy it. I just enjoy it every minute. That's why I still kept all these, all these Leonhard boxes. I mean, I've got them all sitting here because he's really kind of a go-to guy for this repertoire, particularly, as I said, the keyboard repertoire. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks so much for joining me. Go get your Leonhard. Take care.